بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد الله has bestowed this insan with a bounty called health this health is an amana we need to look after this amana and this trust and that's why a person needs to be very vigilant and careful what he consumes and what he utilizes on this body. Among the signs of Qiyamah is obesity will become common. So ulama have listed that amal akl with regards to eating hatta yashba' until a person fills his stomach. Some ulama say hadha makru thus is disliked. And they say that a person that eats until he has no space, like how animals consume and they don't have a limit to eating, likewise he is not human. As for eating until a person has no space and he has indigestion and he is overeating, then ulama have listed hadha fisk this is transgression this is zulm this is oppression qala ba'd al arifin and some friends of allah mentioning about abu bakra somebody told him in abnaka akala al bariha hatta bashim that your son last night consumed food so much that he filled his stomach and he had nausea, he had indigestion. فَقَالَ لَوْ مَا تَمَا صَلَّيْتُ عَلَيْهِ If he had to pass away, I will not read Salah, Janaza for him, even though he is my son. And ulama have listed seven conditions of eating. The first two are wajib. مَا تَقُومُ بِهِ الْحَيَاءِ A person has to survive, otherwise it will be death. It is wajib and necessary to eat, compulsory. Number two, اَيْ يَزِيدَ حَتَّى يَسُوم وَيُصَلِّي And he should eat so much so they can do the faraid, read salah, fast, and make Allah's ibadah. This is also wajib. الثالث, أَيْ يَزِيدَ حَتَّى يَقْدِرَ عَلَىٰ أَدَاءِ النَّوَافِلِ That he increases his consumption so much that he can fulfill the nawafil and optional prayers. Number four, أَيْ يَزِيدَ حَتَّى يَقْدِرَ عَلَىٰ كَسْبِ That he consumes so much that besides the ibadat, but he can suffice for his daily needs and earning. These two, three and four are mandub, Mustahab, preferable, advisable, needed. Number five, أي يملا الثلث that fill your stomach one third وهذا جائز. This is permissible, and this is also good. Number six, أي يزيد عليه that he increases so much that his body becomes very heavy. And he needs to sleep more. makru, And this type of consumption is makru and dust light. Number seven, أي يزيد حتى يتدرى. He increases so much consumption that he harms himself. وَيَلْ بِطْنَ And this is called gluttony or overeating. And this is وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ and this type of gluttony and consumption, it is forbidden in shariat, it is haram, it is not permissible. A person should abstain completely. When he reaches that level where he has overconsumption, then he is harming himself. Amongst the foods that recently have become common are known as MSG, which is monosodium glutamate. So it's found in all processed foods from salad dressings to low yo fat yogurt, canned meats, frozen meals, potato chips, canned soups, uh, uh, crisps, chips, 
crackers. But this is a dangerous ingredient and it's an excitotoxin or a neurotoxic chem chemical additive. And this harms the nerve cells by causing an overexcitement. And it damages and destroys brain cells and can lead to serious health problems, including neurological disorders. So a person who is habitual of consuming this, uh, amongst the causes are weight gain, obesity, hypertension, seizures, ADD, ADHD, heart palpitations, tremors, and uh, some of the symptoms can cause death, la ilaha illallah. So the history of it is that seaweeds, you know, normally in Japan, they used it to enhance flavor. In 1908, a Japanese scientist discovered kombu, which is an active ingredient, glutamic acid. And uh, the use of it, sodium salt, monosodium glutamate, which was discovered in Japan during World War, the Second World War, the soldiers came to realize what the Japanese had and the flavor enhancing uh, functions in the rations which the soldiers had. So after that, multinational corporations started manufacturing glutamic acid in the form of MSG and uh, it was added to processed foods. It was very cheap but very unhealthy. So when you put MSG in food, it's actually very cheap, but it enhances the flavor. So much effort is put into flavor, but not only it enhances the flavor, gives it a better taste, but uh, it gives a person a high and causes an addiction. So a person wonders why these Doritos, these scrubs, chips, why is it so addictive? So glutamic acid is a neurotransmitter and it excites a person, gives him a thrill, especially the taste buds. And that stimulates the neurons of the brain. And the electrical charge in the neurons is what gives you that kick. So that's the external, but realistically, it is dangerous. There's even risks for children, pregnant women, elderly people, people who have chronic problems. Uh, and um, the side effects and after effects can be disastrous, disastrous. If we look at the FDA and the approvals, there was a study which resulted in a report in 1995 and it resulted, the conclusion was that the side effects of MSG, elevated heart rate, extreme rise and drop in blood pressure, angina, circulatory problems, muscle swelling, joint pain, stiffness, neurological problems, depression, dizziness, disorientation, anxiety, hyperactivity in children. So we're wondering why kids are so active, seizures, migraines, gastrointestinal issues, respiratory problems, the list goes on. So, wondering why is it still permissible is for the same reason that mercury is in vaccines, fluoride is in water, etc, etc. Then they've covered up its names as well. So whether it's glutamate, monosodium glutamate, monopotassium glutamate, glutamic acid, textured protein, hydrolyzed protein, yeast nutrient, artificial flavors, flavoring, natural flavoring, chicken flavoring, malt flavoring, seasonings, soy sauce, soy extract, soy protein, soy protein, concentrate, pectin, maltodextrin, wee protein. Many names have been listed, but a person needs to check the ingredients before he eats. And then a simple thing like the oils. So a person who's using 
oils does not bother about the oil that they're using. We see what's the cheapest oil and has the least smell and is best for the taste. But if we look at refined vegetable oil, soybean oil, corn oil, safflower oil, canola oil, peanut oil, etc., etc., then there is an elaborate mechanical and chemical process to derive the oil from the seeds. Then the refining process contains chemical solvents extremely in high temperatures where they deodorize, bleach, remove the natural vitamins and minerals from the seeds. So there's nothing left at all. And uh, most of these vegetable oils are hydrogenated. What does it mean? That the mechanical process creates a trans fatty acid. And this has been known to cause heart disease, cancer. And you find all these ingredients in your normal crackers, baked foods, normal cooking oil. Um, and a lot of ingredients has been used. In, in refining these oils, which is called PUF, rancid polyunsaturated fatty acids, these in, in extreme heats don't hold up. It oxidizes, it turns into trans fats. And to deodorize it, because the smell is so despicable, after they process it, the stench that they have to use a bleach to deodorize the oil. So normally, if an animal ate meat, uh, an animal ate grass, there were seven times more omega-3 fats which is beneficial. So in the olden days, the pasture raised organic grass-fed animals with no hormones or antibiotics. So we need to see our meats as well. And it's a separate topic on its own, is what they feed in the animals from hormones to antibiotics to grass-fed, non-organic. And the meat itself is one topic on its own. But, but sticking to the refined oils, thus oils now contain omega-6 fat. So from your corn, your soy, your cotton seed, canola, we have a decrease in omega-3, increase in omega-6. And omega-6 is a likelihood of increase in inflammatory diseases, mental illness, suicide, homicide, mental inflammation of the brain. So a Dr. Joseph who was part of the National Institute of Health who done research on omega-3 and omega-6. He said the harms now that we have left omega-3 fats, which are healthy, and we only have omega-6 causes of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, obesity, metabolic syndrome, pre-diabetes, irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, eye damage, blindness, asthma, cancer, psychiatric disorders, autoimmune disease. And again, the list goes on. So a person should be very particular about the oils that they're using. If you want to use, use extra virgin cold pressed olive oil it needs to be cold pressed organic coconut oil in the olden days we had ghee natural organic butter so from our milk that's a separate topic on its own again so we need to be very particular then we look at genetically modified foods, GMOs. So high fructose corn syrup, corn sugar, glucose, fructose syrup, fruit fructose. And uh, this is directly linked to weight gain. Whether you find it in your drinks, your salad dressings, your breads, your cereals, your yogurts, your soups, your meats, your sauces, your condiments, and what is this GMO? So whether it's plants, animals, or microorganisms where genetic material has been altered. So the genetics has been altered. And it's not occurring naturally on the natural recombination structure of nature, but through modern biotechnology or gene technology, or call it uh, re recombined DNA technology or in today's terms, genetic 
engineering. So if we look at from all the corn to soybeans, even in the U.S., most of the crops in Monsanto's behind it, maize, potato, a lot of it, most of it in the U.S. is GMOs. But we find the EU have banned many of the products which are GMO. So, if we look at other countries, Asia, India, China, because most of their crops are GMO, it's going to cost less, more resistant, pro pro produce higher yields. You will not get any regulation to prevent it or forbid it. So one, one tenth of the world's croplands are GM plants. US, Canada, Brazil, Argentina grow 90% of the planet's GM crops. So if we look at the history from GMO foods where scientists developed the first GMO tobacco plants in the 70s, then GMO 90s, it reached the marketplace and many people at that time were against it. So 99% of soya and 84% of maize grown in America is GMO. Means their DNA, their genes have been, the molecular structure is changed completely. So it's like a new variation, a new plant, a new organism. So there's no need for wheat killers, herbicides, but uh, these products, example glyphosate, it's found in every loaf of bread sold in supermarkets in South Africa or whichever other country. But glyphosate is a carcinogen, meaning it can cause cancer, la ilaha illallah. So, and 80 countries globally have, when tests were done in certain countries, they found that glyphosate was found in human blood. So, biotech companies are, are, are on boarding, countries are on boarding, and they say that uh, engineered crops have jumped from 2001 to now. Uh, figures are, uh, we're not even going to get into the figures, but uh, it's becoming the norm of the day. Why? Because the idea is just to make more money extort people and from simple ordinary corn to squash to soybeans to cotton all of these are bioengineered from squash to papaya and we need to do research and get into it if we look at even in 2012 uh, Monsanto spent millions and millions of dollars why because a law a proposition 47 was there to force labels, to lust GMOs. But they spent money so that it doesn't happen. So the next time a person wakes up in the morning and has a, a Diet Coke, which has got fluoridated water, and he had a vaccination and eat some crisp, then you must know how many poisons you had that morning. So the scientists have put a doomsday vault, a seed bank, to protect, but how much protection are we really doing? Then sodium nitrate, which is used as a preservative in meats. So the World Cancer Research Fund have uh, mentioned whether it's cured meats, whether it's corn, whether it's bakery, whether it's pickle, whether it's canned, whether it's dried, whether it's even our biltong but possibly there's sodium nitrate in it. Then uh, potassium bromate, which is enriched flour. It's used in additive in foods, breads, rolls, flours. And uh, there's a been red flags on cancer warning, sugar highs. So these are ingredients when we consume, we need to be careful. May Allah protect us. The amal for today is the best food is eat food which you worked with your own hands which you worked with your own hands